Back tonight, here in Focus, authorities in the Western Cape have officially welcomed new recruits into Law Enforcement Advancement Plan, otherwise known as LEAP. The province says it has observed notable difference in addressing crime and preventing violence in areas where it has deployed LEAP officers. LEAP officers are currently deployed in 13 areas, of which 10 form part of the top 10 murder hotspots in the province. Joining us now to share his observation on their efficiency in tackling crime in the Western Cape is Provincial MEC for Community Safety and Police Oversight, uh, Regan Allen. MEC, good evening and uh, good to have you once again uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus. Uh, we, of course, continue to ask the question, uh, is this the solution for policing? And are you beginning to, to see the fruits of that, right? Uh, the uh, ANC in, in the province are saying this has been a rushed process that has never had an implementation framework, neither a monitoring and evaluation mechanism. So are you beginning to see the results of this intervention and how are you measuring that? Tabu, thank you so much for this opportunity to share some of the successes as well as the impact that we've seen in the LEAP program. So what we've seen initially, Tabu, is that we have chronic under-resourcing in the South African Police Service. We have a 10% vacancy rate within the SAPS as well. So the Premier in 2019 kick-started the Western Cape Safety Plan. And one component in the Western Cape Safety Plan is the deployment of LEAP officers. That is based on data and on evidence where we have also reaction units to stabilize certain communities. So, yes, we have today once again added an additional 100 to the LEAP officers that are deployed in our crime hotspot areas, like you've indicated. And we've seen successes in that regard. Nyanga is no longer the murder capital of South Africa. It's an area where LEAP has been deployed. Kayalicha, we've seen there's a drop in Kayalicha. We've seen there's a drop even in Google Leto, no longer being in the top 30 murder stations. Because we've had to be clear, Tabu, we don't have time to waste. Our people are living in fear. We've had to step in where national government has failed to step up, basically. So that is the one component of the law enforcement adding the extra boots on the ground, which is needed. On the other hand, the Western Cape Safety Plan also speaks to the violence prevention component, looking at the rules. Um, looking at the root causes of crime, but then each and every department within the Western Cape has a role to play towards safety. So we've seen successes. I'm delighted yeah. that we are making headway in that regard. We're investing money outside of our mandate table yes. because policing in its current form is a national competency where provinces don't have policing. Hence, yeah. we are also continuing the call for, for SAPs to be devolved so that it can be decentralized yeah. to provincial governments and metros is, for policing. Is it justified, though, to be spending that amount of money outside of your mandate? They're saying in the three years you have spent close to 579 million on this particular campaign with 415 million in three years going just to salaries. And uh, they are lamenting a lack of oversight in how this money is being spent. Not at all, Tabu. That money is because of that chronic under-resourcing within the South African Police Service. If we visit any precinct, any SAP station where LEAP officers has been deployed, SAPs on the ground will even say, we also need, uh, we also need LEAP in our areas. Communities are also now saying, when is LEAP coming to our areas? So it's currently only in the 13 areas. So we would like to extend that even, but we've seen that it's due to that chronic under-resourcing. And I think it will be vital to mention this, that in the year 2020, during the midterm budget policy statement, 11 billion rand was taken away from SAPs away from justice, away from education by national government. So we've had to step up. We can't just be sitting around and not doing anything, even if it's not within our mandate, because it's so needed. People are dying, Tabu. People are living in fear. And this additional resources, together with all the other initiatives and programs that we are running, we are seeing those successes. And we will obviously continue. The ANC is more than welcome to interrogate us during the parliamentary processes. I've even asked them for input. Tell us if there's anything that you would want us to do. We've not gotten any credible plan from the ANC. So we are telling the ANC, support us. 
in this fight to devolve SAPs so that we can have better control and we can actually ensure that SAPs become a professional um, service so that the residents can be served. Tabu, we are living in a province where we have gangsterism. We are not seeing enough arrest in that regard. We yeah. are not seeing convictions. Yes. So, so we've had to step up, Tabu. Yeah. That, that's, that's precisely the, 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 the other criticism, MEC, that you, you have not improved the safety in, in gang-infested uh, Cape Flats, for example, uh, in, 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 in this particular deployment. That is not what the data is showing us. The data is showing us during the last quarter, in eight of the top ten murder stations, we actually reduced the murder rate and a number of other category crime areas. So we've seen a dip already. Cryfontein, for example, had a dip of 40.2% in the murder rate. And like I've indicated, Nyanga is no longer part of the murder capital of South Africa. Also, Guguleto is outside of the top 30. So we've seen successes, and that is the work we do also with neighborhood watches and with CPFs. We fund a credit resource and help the neighborhood watches and the CPFs yeah. with programs and to be the eyes and ears on the ground, looking at that cooperative approach where we work together right. and we bring all safety stakeholders together, Tabu. Let's look at that, uh, at that success. We'll come back to the CPFs in a moment, and I'll raise some of the issues that they are raising. 8,500 arrests, 220 illegal guns that are being retrieved. Those arrests, have they all led to successful prosecution? Have they improved the prosecution outcomes? Not entirely. Some of them are still ongoing. Remember, when any person is arrested, that matter then lands with the detectives in the South African Police Service in order to take that matter to court. We also have an initiative called the Court Watching Brief where we monitor court cases like murder, rape, assault GBV and in the last quarter 198 of those cases were struck off the court roll because of inefficiencies within the South African Police Service. Our detectives for example sit with a caseload of one detective dealing with 250 dockets so we've seen that needs to be racked up that is still a national competency but we are doing everything in our power to extend our mandate to see what we can do to keep our residents safe but what I want to say 222 guns that was taken off our streets. That means that there's so many guns that are now taken off our streets that not in the, la um, in the hand of criminals tormenting and killing and stray bullets going, through, going into the head of a five-year-old in some of our areas. So we have seen those successes. We will continue those successes, but I want to echo again on the ground. SAPs working with the LEAP officers, working with Metro Police and law enforcement and safety stakeholders. The sentiment is we are seeing the successes. Yeah. So the Let's data is also showing us that. Let's talk on the CPF on, on the LEAP officers as well. Then we'll look at the broader safety plan in a moment. Affected areas, what are the CPF saying? Affected areas like Enkanini and Enlovini, for example. Uh, these are informal settlements. This is where there is a prevalence of, 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 of violent crime. That is linked to economic factors. But mm. apart from that, they are saying there is a lack of uh, patrols in informal settlements, but also there is a lack, for example, of uh, uh, CCTV cameras. So there's a lack of monitoring. And where there are CCTV cameras in, in places like Nyanga, for example, uh, others are saying, and I'm, I'm sure you remember the last time you were on here, we spoke mm. to the CCPF at Kailicha, that those uh, CCTV cameras have not been maintained and in some instances have not been working mm. for months. We have consistently engaged various stakeholders in our engagement with the city of Cape Town. That competency rests with the city of Cape Town. The city of Cape Town have, have invested millions now towards additional CCTV cameras. I'm closely monitoring that process as well to ensure that those CCTV cameras are in place. I'm also engaging ward councillors regarding ward councillor in, um, um, allocations that can be used towards safety within their specific areas. So from our side, we are bringing our part. From national government, we are holding them accountable, but we are also, in terms of 
of safety and security in the city of Cape Town, even in our district municipalities, where we are engaging them around resources that needs to be spent in order to ensure that communities are safer. We are consistently engaging the CPFs. I've been very clear. I want to foster those relationships. I want to work with CPFs. I want to take the politics out of it so that we are able to jointly come together and address and tackle crime. Because I've been saying today, I've been saying over this this last couple of weeks that criminal stabu have adopted the spirit in which our constitution was drafted, in which people died for because criminals organize. And if we as government and stakeholders are unable to organize, then we are going to fight a losing battle. So I'm bringing stakeholders together. I'm engaging CPFs. We are funding CPFs for programs and neighborhood watches. We are working with the LEAP officers and the city of Cape Town to address that. I want to take the politics out of it. We need to look at the data. We need to be scientific to make those deployment where it is most needed, Tabu. And we've seen those successes. We obviously have a way to go and we will continue in our efforts. You've uh, already highlighted the fact that there are, of course, other causative factors uh, that lead to violent crimes that really don't sit within your particular mandate, but that require other other departments. And by and large, these are the, the economic factors. Mm. It, it seems, even though as you're going ahead with the LEAP officers, uh, somehow those other areas are not keeping up with that same pace that mm. uh, you, you are currently implementing your own program. We have as a cabinet in terms of the Western Cape safety plan. And when I grew up in Mitchell's plan, I'm fully aware of those socioeconomic circumstances that lead a young person into a life of crime. We've seen poverty, unemployment, a lack of opportunities. So social development and the work that they do in violence prevention, the work that education do in safe schools in order to address bullying and antisocial behavior, the work that cultural affairs and sport is doing in terms of off the care programs and mod centers a mod center is a mass opportunity and development center at our at our schools where there's funding and there's programs available in order to help those young people but like you say the economic opportunities we've seen that the role that finance play and economic opportunities to from from national government from local government and provincial government, how that needs to be cemented within our in our communities so that those opportunities can be there. And I'm engaging colleagues in that regard. We are working with stakeholders to ensure that that violence prevention arm is totally jacked up so that we are able to then see that benefit so that the two-pronged approach, Tabu, the violence prevention on the one hand, but also the law enforcement the policing component actually gel together so that we are able to see even a better success rate in that regard. And we remain, we remain committed to that. All the best with the latest deployment, MEC. Thanks so much for your time and uh, for coming on uh, tonight. That's the MEC for Community Safety and Police Oversight in the Western Cape. That's Regan Allen there.